One of the simplest things you can do to make really good coffee at home without a lot of equipment is to do pour over coffee. Here I'm gonna walk you through the equipment you actually need versus the optimal perfect equipment and tell you how to make the perfect cup of coffee. What I've got going on for you here is a few different ways of grinding coffee and a simple pour over device. This is a metal filter for pour overs. These are really important. Most pour over types of, of brewing coffee use paper filters. Paper filters soak up the coffee oils, which lowers the flavor in your coffee, and it means you don't get the benefits of the coffee oils. And if you Google around, you'll find that there are some really interesting benefits from coffee oils. Now, what you do is you measure a certain amount of coffee, in this case for one liter of coffee, about 60, 65 grams of coffee, you grind it to be the size of coarse sugar, and you want it to all be coarse sugar, and I'll explain why the grinder really matters for you to get good coffee. You need beans, preferably bulletproof coffee beans that are made free of mold toxins because we change the coffee processing technology and use lab testing in Central and South America where we source the coffee. So there's a different science to the coffee, so you actually want less coffee that way, and it tastes really good. And you want water. Here's the problem. When you do a drip coffee maker at home the way your grandfather probably used to, it doesn't heat the water enough. You only get to 175 degrees Fahrenheit. When you're doing a pour over, what you wanna be able to do is you wanna be able to get the water up to anywhere between like 195, maybe even 190 and 200. So for Bulletproof Coffee beans, I like somewhere around 197 to 199. And you can buy a kettle for around $80, $90 that has built-in temperature controls. Or in my case, I'm using a kettle here with a laboratory grade digital temperature controller because, well, I am uh, the Bulletproof executive. I sort of have a kitchen laboratory here and I do this when I'm preparing food as well, like for my cookbook. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure out some beans and after a little while you just know how much it looks like, but I'm gonna measure so you can see. This device is called an Airscape canister and I carry them on the Bulletproof site. What it does is it keeps the beans free of most oxygen so you can store a bag of coffee all week on the counter without light and heat messing with it. The special one-way valve on here makes that possible. So I use this to store my coffee. I'm gonna turn on the scale, let it wake up and There's about 65 grams of coffee. This is enough for a whole liter of coffee. That would be technically size large. And if we're looking at the laboratory temperature controller, you'll see the water's at 199 degrees. So I have whole coffee beans the right amount, but I don't have them ground. So here's what to do depending on your level of coffee fanaticism. You could do the monk way, where you have a hand grinder and you put the coffee into the hand grinder, put the lid on, this is made by Hario, and then crank it for like a long time till your arm gets tired, which is good because it gives you time to boil the water. This gives you no thermal stress in the beans. It's technically the best way to do it, but for God's sake, don't we all have things to do? Yes, so unless you're like really kind of a crazy coffee snob, you probably wouldn't do this regularly. You'll notice I own this because I have done this. I just found it wasn't worth the trouble unless I was doing something crazy and I just felt like it. The most common type of coffee grinder that you'll find is a chopper and they have a blade that looks something like this inside them. And what this does is this chops coffee or spices or anything else. This is a really nice one from, uh, from Cuisinart. And what happens is if you're gonna do coffee in one of these, you get dust and boulders. So you get some fine particles, some big particles. You want uniform particle size because when you pour water through this, you don't wanna get dust in the bottom of your coffee cup. That's what makes dregs. And since we're using a metal filter, this is an Abel filter from Abel Coffee Company, really, really good. They use laser perforations, very, very tiny micro perforations. You can actually see through it, but you probably can't see me through it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grind the coffee, but I'm gonna use this tried and true Cuisinart also, uh, I believe, yep, uh, Cuisinart coffee grinder. This is a coffee mill, not a chopper. And what a coffee mill does, it uses two burrs that make complete uniform size. This is what, if you go to a coffee shop like a, a Starbucks or any of the large chain coffee shops, all of them are standardized on burr grinders because you get standard size and you can control the brew better. This is the simple thing to do. You're gonna spend like 50 bucks on a burr grinder versus like 20 bucks on a chopper and it's the best investment you can make. Spend that money before you buy a special kettle, for instance. 
although having some source of hot water that's just off a boil is a really good idea. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the coffee, and I'm gonna grind it. Slide problem. If you have kids and you're waking up early in the morning, grinding your coffee fresh is kind of noisy no matter what you do, but it's worth it. It tastes good, so do it in the garage if you have to, but you gotta grind your coffee beans. It's such a difference. Or you can do what I do when I'm on the road. You have it ground ahead of time. You buy the beans whole, we'll ship them to you, and then you can grind it yourself, or we'll even grind them for you right after they're roasted, and then you can get them that way, and we seal them as fast as possible, but you will always get better coffee if you grind it yourself. It, it's, as, it's, it's very important. So what I have here is coffee. You don't have to do this, but if you want to improve the quality of your coffee, you want to preheat your coffee brewing setup. So what I'm gonna do here is take the water. This is the thermometer that the digital temperature controller uses. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of this through. What I've done now is I've made this hot because no one wants to put hot coffee in a cold Coffee brewer, that would be wrong. And what I'll do now, so you can see this, I'll do it up here. If you fill your filter about halfway to two thirds full, you're gonna get the best pour over you can get. This works with a paper filter, but I don't recommend it. If you use a paper filter, you need to preheat the paper filter and wash that paper flavor out of it and discard the water the way I just did. What I'm gonna do now, I'll tip this so you can see it. I'm gonna make a little, kind of flatten this out without pushing it too hard and make a little divot here. Next, the tool that you're gonna need is a timer. So I'm gonna use a really high-tech timer called an iPhone. What you wanna do here is start your stopwatch and I'm gonna do pre-wetting for about 30 seconds. Why would you pre-wet your coffee? Because when you pre-wet your coffee, it allows the CO2, the carbon dioxide from freshly roasted beans to off-gas. And that off-gassing makes a difference. So we're gonna wait another five, 10 seconds, just a little bit of it's dripping out. And then my goal is to pour the water so that it's mostly full in here, but so that it takes me three minutes to pour the water. You see why some people just use a normal coffee maker or they use a French press because there's less maintenance, but there's an artistry and almost a kind of meditation that comes from doing it this way. I really appreciate the three minutes of pouring because it might be the only time that day when my brain is just in default mode where it's, a, it's not a high intention task, but it's kind of a bit of a ritual. And during that time, my brain does other stuff that seems important. So this is sort of the joy of coffee. And it should be about time to pour. I'm pouring in little circles, trying not to disturb the coffee too much. You'll find if you do this regularly that you know when you've poured too much or too little and when you stir it up too much because there's something about the quality of the coffee that comes out. This is the meditative part. After I finish pouring, there'll be about another 30 seconds of dripping depending on the grind and how full the filter is. There are special kettles, which I'm not using today, that have a spout designed for this that are digitally temperature controlled. Uh, Bonavita makes a nice one. I wanted to use my Smeg one because, well, it looks cool. We're at two minutes. I have about one more minute of pouring. If you find that your filter clogs, you're not supposed to do this, but you can. Tap it a little bit.
You can take up to four minutes if you have a lot of coffee or a larger filter like I do. Check that out. I'm just about done pouring and it's at three minutes and 12 seconds. Of course, there was a 30 second pre-pour, pre-wet time. So I still have 15 seconds left and I'm almost out of water. Within five seconds, I think I get a gold star for that. Now for the next 30 seconds, you're gonna find that this coffee is gonna drip through the filter and when we're done, we're gonna have beautiful, amazing black coffee it's gonna have all the coffee oils in it the way you want so that you feel the effects of your coffee. And then what I'll do is I'll blend this with grass-fed butter, brain octane oil, and it's going to be a pretty amazing cup of Bulletproof coffee. Or if I've already had enough brain octane this morning and I want a second cup, I might just drink it black. When the coffee's just about done dripping through, you know you're done. You can see there's just a few drops coming out. So you take the filter out and put it in the sink. Now there's two things to do with coffee grounds. A lot of people, especially on city sewage, you can just take it and pour it down the drain. And as long as there's lots of water going with it, it's gonna go into the sewage system just fine. It's a better use to take it and use it for compost and if you're on a septic system like I am, don't put it in the drain. It's gonna eventually clog up your septic field. You won't know it for months or a few years, but it's really expensive if to make the perfect cup of coffee, you replace $50,000 worth of drainage field. So in that case, you need to at least put it in the compost pile or the trash. Usually this stuff goes in my garden. When you have fresh brewed hot coffee like this, it's gonna be really hot. And it's also going to change flavor within the first 30 seconds, the first minute, first five minutes. So you'll find when you have really good coffee, like these Bulletproof beans, what you get is just like a flavor that, that comes through and the transformation over the first 30 seconds can be, it can be a pretty substantial change, let's see. I nailed it, <laughs> this is so good. If this was overwhelming, let me break it down for you. Grind your coffee, medium grind, do the best you can. I've done it with a mortar and pestle on a cruise ship when I had to, it's okay. Grind coffee. Add coffee to a filter. If it's paper, you gotta rinse it. If it's metal, you should heat it up. So do that. Pour water slowly. Water should be almost boiling, but not boiling and not too cool. Take about three minutes, drink. That's it. And if you want bonus points and you wanna feel good all day, Add the grass-fed butter, add the brain octane oil, blend it, and you're gonna have Bulletproof coffee. But as it is, we've got an amazing cup of black coffee made with Bulletproof upgraded coffee beans. Enjoy. I just shot a video about how you can make like the perfect cup of Bulletproof coffee and how you can make everything exactly right. And I'm gonna show you how to actually make a cup of coffee when you're just a little bit angry, you just need a cup of coffee. First thing, you need like some beans. And Bulletproof coffee beans, yeah, yeah, you wanted to use those because they're better, right? So you take some beans and you like get some. You could measure how many beans you have, but it doesn't really matter because you want about the same amount of beans you always use.